SpaceX engineers took to Reddit over the weekend to host an Ask Me Anything session, and we've got the answers. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on SpaceX. In this case, with some uh, new interesting tidbits and answers directly from the SpaceX team who hosted an Ask Me Anything session on Reddit over the weekend, and they took a lot of interesting questions and revealed some here for before never revealed details about Starlink and the beta program. So let's dive into some of what we have learned that is new. First off, the beta program. It has been rolling out just across the most northerly states in the United States, and there have been some reports online that a few invitations have begun going out into Canada as well. Um, but when is this going to go out to a broader audience and to more of the country than just the, you know, basically the frigid Great White North? And that answer is late January is the intention to broaden the beta program to a much, much wider audience and a much wider coverage area. Uh, separate from the, the Reddit thread, uh, Elon Musk has actually shared recently that by late January, they're hoping to have enough satellites in place and all the various faulty ones that have died during their development process replaced so that they have full coverage all the way down to the 30 degree latitude line. So that means, well, Florida's still out of luck, the Gulf Coast is out of luck, and uh, Southern Texas is out of luck. But most of the rest of the United States should be in uh, good Starlink coverage by late January, and that's when they'll start inviting more and more people to sign up. So, hey, exciting, you'll be able to take Starlink to more places, right? Well, before you get too excited about mobile and taking your Starlink from location to location, even if you're not trying to use it in motion, the Starlink engineers were clear that right now the system basically is limited to providing service around the home address that you register with. So when you sign up at Starlink.com and get invited to the beta and get your dish sent to you, it will work near your house, you know, maybe they said a few towns over and stuff, but you are confined to that little zone for the time being. Um, this is typical, typically how a lot of satellite systems work, where you are assigned to a residential spot beam, a spot beam servicing one area, and the systems have to be enabled with software to allow you to go to other places. So the Starlink engineers clarified that, yes, indeed, they have this limitation for the time being. They are working to provide mobility solutions in the future that will come via software updates and potentially new hardware. And I would not be surprised if it's also potentially different service plans and pricing. So don't plan on taking your Starlink system on the road if you get in on the beta just yet. Wait for all those details to be ironed out down the road. Oh, and one other note that uh, came up is the current Starlink system, speaking of mobility, is actually not very mobile friendly. We've had one of our uh, site members who's been doing some experimentation mounting his Starlink on top of an ATV and has discovered the system will shut down as soon as it detects any sort of motion, you know, whether forward motion, driving very slowly, or even just the sort of rocking that you might get if you were on a boat at anchor or um, you know, in motion in some sort of slow, leisurely fashion. The system is not enabled for mobility just yet. It will shut down and need to be rebooted, which is a three to five minute process if any motion is detected. So keep that in mind. Don't think you're going to be putting Starlink on your boat, even if you're at dock just yet. But, um, well, again, give it time. The software is evolving and well, there might be a second generation of hardware that is more mobile focused as well. Uh, the next biggest question that the uh, Starlink engineers were asked during the session was about data caps. Are there going to be data caps on Starlink usage just like there are on most other satellite systems? And for the time being, they confirmed there are indeed no data caps whatsoever. But in time, they actually acknowledged that they might need to put some sort of caps in place or some sort of limits in place or some sort of some something in place to combat um, you know, abuse and excess usage to keep it uh, fair and balanced for everybody. So those details are yet to be worked out. They've made it very clear that they really don't like the idea of data caps. They don't want data caps, but they will put in whatever sort of limitations they feel are necessary eventually. So it may not be unlimited forever, or it may actually have you know network management thresholds and stuff like we see on some unlimited cellular plans. But again, that is down the road. And another interesting topic is the subject of space lasers. Now, the initial Starlink proposal years ago talked about how every satellite would have lasers so that it could send, take your signal from the ground 
and bounce it around from satellite to satellite to satellite and going down again near your destination. Um, bypassing, you know, all the slowness of going through terrestrial fiber optics, um, you know, getting service out into places where there are no possible satellite ground stations nearby. And people saw that initial proposal and just assumed that is what SpaceX has built. And we've been covering this in all of our videos that no, the initial, the first generation of Starlink satellites does not have lasers. And so that means every Starlink data session is going up from you or from the, the customer to the satellite and then immediately back down to a ground station. If there's no ground station in range, there is, even if there's a satellite overhead, there is no signal, there's no coverage. And uh, SpaceX engineers confirmed that so far only two satellites have had the lasers. They've done an experimental test with the laser system. They still need a lot of work to drive the costs down and be able to ramp up the production to be able to eventually, in a future generation of Starlink, deploy the laser system. It's definitely on their roadmap. If you are an expert in that area, they're hiring desperately to bring in more people to solve the laser problems, but it is not there yet. So don't get too excited about Starlink in the middle of the ocean just yet because, well, there's no ground stations there to serve you. But fortunately, you know, North American audience, pretty much all of North America is already covered by the ground stations that SpaceX has been rolling out. So not a big issue in North America, but for far afield, other countries, middle of the ocean, middle of the desert, um, definitely no space lasers just yet. Um, another interesting little tidbit that came out from the, the session, the Starlink dish actually has a built-in heater to melt snow, so it can handle you know, extreme climates. It will heat itself up and run the snow right off of it. Um, but even without the heater going on, a lot of uh, Starlink customers in the beta have expressed concern about how much power the system uses over 100 watts continuously. So if, if you're on an off-grid solar cabin, that is a significant amount of power to be using continuously. And again, the SpaceX engineers acknowledge that, yep, that is a concern. They are working on vastly improving um, power consumption. They're putting in deep sleep modes. And these are all sorts of other things that will be coming as the software evolves and the hardware evolves and things go forward. And that brings me to the final point is, remember, this is a beta process and a beta period, and the Starlink system is evolving rapidly. It's only been available for beta testers for a few weeks now. And people are seeing um, all sorts of, of really, really great performance, um, but also some um, Poor performance and some mostly really inconsistent poor performance with you know great great speeds then maybe a dropout for a minute great great speeds and such and well that is to be expected as the system is being rolled out the satellites are filling in their final orbits the software is being tweaked and developed and well that's what you're signing up for when you're getting into a beta program if you're uh, waiting to see if Starlink does stabilize and become this a uh, um, uh, live up to its full potential, well, maybe wait till this time next year, in which case the coverage should be getting close to being global, and um, a lot of these initial teething problems should be worked out. Maybe there'll be another generation of hardware. Maybe they'll have even managed to bring the costs down, which is definitely a concern for some people. But anyway, that is the latest update on the state of Starlink. A lot of exciting things are happening. In fact, there's another Starlink launch happening, uh, well, theoretically in just a few more hours. So the pace is fast and it is a pretty exciting time to be tracking satellite broadband internet. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.